Okay, so we are starting uh, chapter eight today. It's over all fractions. We've already kind of started fractions doing the fraction review from last year. A lot of that stuff we will cover again through this chapter, okay? Um, this section that we're gonna do today particularly will make your math life easier, okay? Because I'm gonna teach you how to divide without doing any division, any long division for the most part, okay? For example, um, if we have five divided by six, you guys don't have to write this. I'm just kind of getting you set up for where we're going today. Five divided by six. First, can I take five divided by six? Raise your hand and what do you think? Raise your hand if you think I can. Five divided by six. Can, C-A-N. Okay, raise your hand if you think I cannot. Okay, why do you think I cannot? Kenley, give me your reasoning. Okay, so a lot of people think no because the dividend of five is less than the divisor. That is incorrect. We can divide a smaller number by a larger number. It's just our answer will be less than one. It'll be between zero and one. What kind of numbers are between zero and one, Stella? Decimals, Decimals or Fraction. fractions, okay? So if we take a small number and divide it by a larger number, it is possible. It's just our answer will be a fraction or a decimal. Every fraction has a decimal equivalency. What does that mean? Emmett? The decimal means it just means that there's a fraction and a decimal that have the same value. And you know a couple of them. What is the decimal for one half? One half. Jack? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. That is a fraction and it's decimal equivalency. Okay? Every fraction in the world has a decimal value also. We're gonna get later on on how to convert those between the two, okay? But for this, I could divide this out. How do I do this? How do I do this, Chase? Yeah, I can add, I have to add a decimal point and then I can add as many zeros as I need. So, Callan, how many times does 6 go into 50? 8. 8? Okay, because 6 times 8 is what? 48. 48. Good job. So then I'm going to subtract. I get 2. Is my answer 0 0.8 remainder 2? No. Ethan, what do I do next? Oh, I add 0 to the top. Okay, I add another 0 and I drop it down. What do you mean? Briley, how many times does 6 go into 20? Three. So three times six is eighteen. Okay. I subtract, I get two. Now what? Logan, what do I do next? I add another zero. I drop it, I get 20, 6 goes into 20 three times, I get 18, I'd subtract, I'd get 2. What are we noticing, Nolan? It's a repeating, it's a repeating decimal. So the answer is actually 0 0.83 with the repeating bar over the 3. Now, here's why that doesn't make sense. If we're talking about pizza, that means I ate 5 out of 6 of the pieces of pizza. Would you say I ate 0 0.83 repeating of the pizza? No. no, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes the decimal version is our best answer. Most of the time, the fraction answer makes the most sense and is the best answer. And it's easier to find. Because was this easy to do? It's not that the math is super hard, but is it real quick? No, no, it takes time to write it out. 
Does anybody know what 5 divided by 6 is as a fraction? Uh, so easy, it's hard. Emmett? Zero. No. Nope. Cam? Zero point eight. Nope. Eight. Stella? Eight. Nope. Eight. Jack? Five, six. Five, six. Five divided by six is five six. Do we have to do any math at all no. to do that? No, the only thing we have to do sometimes is simplify. So if it's a proper fraction, we can reduce the numerator and denominator. If it's a mixed num or sorry, an improper fraction, we can simplify it to a mixed number. Which was easier, saying 5 divided by 6 is 5 6 or 5 divided by 6 is 0 0.83 repeating? The fraction. The fraction, okay? It's almost always easier, but they have the same value, okay? Five, if I said I ate 5 6 of a pizza or I ate 0 0.83 repeating of a pizza, that's saying the exact same thing. Cooper. Yep, like give me an example. 123 divided by 7. So to divide that out, yeah, that is saying 1, 2, 3 over 700. And then we would just have to reduce that if possible. Yep, that's it. You're, you're exactly correct. So let's just look. Does 3 go into the top number? Yes, yes, yes. Why, Nolan? Yeah, 3 plus 1 plus 2 equals 6. 3 goes into 6. So 3 goes into 123. Does 3 go into 7? No. Nope. 4, you would look at the last two digits. 4 doesn't go into 23, so 4 doesn't go into 123. Um, 5, does 5 go into both of them? No. Why doesn't 6? Does anybody know the rule for 6? It's a mixture of two rules. Cam? It's consistently by 3 and 9. Nope, not 3 and 9. 3... How do you get 6? 3 and 2. It has to be divisible by both 3 and 2. So yeah, I, I don't know, because you always have to check like 17, 19, 23, those weird um, numbers to see if it can be simplified, but that's probably simplest form. And then I could give it as a decimal also if I divide it out. Okay? So that's actually what we're doing today is I have to get in your brain that when you see 5 divided by 6, you don't have to divide it out and give an ugly decimal answer or even a pretty decimal answer. You can give it in its fraction form and just simplify. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. So your math behind what you're doing today is very, very simple. It's just making sure you get the numbers in the right order because 5 divided by 6 and 6 divided by 5 are not the same thing. Okay, so first on page 550, it should be like a colorful page. We're going to take some notes over there. I'm just going to pull mine up on this page in your book, page 550. And we have three colors, so I'm just going to use those colors to kind of separate my division problem. What are the three pieces of any division problem? Chase, give me one piece. OK, I'm going to put my divide sign here and my equal sign there. What would you say, Chase? Dividend? OK, that is one piece. Where does my dividend go in a division problem? You. Okay, that is incorrect. Emmett? The dividend goes in the front. Yeah, the dividend is in the front. And I'm glad he said in the front and not that it's the larger number. Because is the dividend always the larger number? No, okay? So we have to know. We're going to go down from dividend. When we are looking at a word problem, it's not the larger number. So how can I decide, Carter, are you getting all this? How can I decide what in the word problem is my dividend? Because it is not the larger number. So how else can I make that decision? Briley? Um, like by the one that you have to initially. 
Yep. Hold on just a sec. I'm record. Yep, give me just a sec. I got to turn off my recording. Okay, so we had dividend. Uh, Briley, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Okay, so it's the number that's being divided, but how will you know that, hey, this is the number that I'm going to be dividing? That's what we're trying to figure out, because th these are going to be in your notes, because this is the hardest part of these problems, is picking out the dividend. Cam? So it's always some kind of total. Okay, it is some kind of total, but it also, you have to kind of mix those two things together, what Cam said and what Briley said. It's a total, but in a problem, it is what is being divided up, and again, I'm trying to stay in the green, dividing up, what are some other words they could use to tell us that they're dividing stuff up in these word problems? What else can mean divide? What other words do you see in word problems? Kinley? Nope, difference is subtract. Cam? It will not say find the quotient. So think of words that mean dividing up. If I said I'm dividing up candy today, what other words could I use? Cooper? Uh, say that different. Giving away, but out. passing out. Sometimes they're passing things out. So whatever is being divided up, passed out, Passed out. What else? Kinley? Uh, pass. No. What else can I do with candy? I can pass it out. Mm -hmm. That's passing it out. That's passing it out. Avery? Okay, group. Group it. Share it. So what, what is being divided up, passed out, oh, that should say grouped, not group it, shared, used. Okay, you have to think about what do you have that's being split up, divided up, shared, distributed, passed out. Those are all words that say, hey, this is your dividend. Whatever you have in your possession that's being shared, passed out, divided up. Okay, what do we call the second number, Reese? The divisor. And what do we call the third number, Emmett? What'd you say? The quotient. Now, for these two, they're interchangeable. What does the word interchangeable mean? Briley? You can switch them out. The labels aren't always the same, okay? The dividend is always the total. What do you have that's being passed out? These two, we're gonna draw an arrow because these two could have this, they, they're interchangeable, which means sometimes the divisor is the number of groups. I'm gonna put slash pieces slash parts, it depends what the problem is. We could refer to it as any of those. The number of groups or number of pieces or the number of parts. So for example, Mrs. Schilling has 600 pieces of candy. If she divides it among her 23 students, what would my question be? So, because I gave you a total, I gave you my number of groups, which is my 23 students. What would the question have to be? If I said, Ms. Schilling has 600 pieces of candy and she divides it equally among her 23 students, what would my question be? Cam? How much money are these students? Yes. So, one of these, the divisor of the quotient, answers how many. And the other one, what did you say, Cam? Yeah, how much each one gets. So it's the amount or size of each group slash piece slash part, which answers the question, how much? Okay, it will always give you a total and one of those. It'll either tell you how many 
or how much, and then you'll, the quotient will be the other one. Okay? So on that question, I gave you 600 pieces. That's my total. I gave you 23 groups. That's my divisor. So then the quotient would represent the other one of how much is each one getting. Every division problem is set up that way. If I said, um, Mrs. Schilling has 600 total pieces, each of her students gets 60 pieces, how many students does she have? All I did was flip these labels. Okay, let's look at the problem over on page 551. Does everybody have this written down? Because I'm gonna have you refer back to this page a lot while we're working. Okay. So at the top, it gives us some vocabulary. We've already went over this, okay? A fraction, you know what a fraction is. We talked about how one third is just one divided by three. If I go to divide that out long ways, Okay, if I go to write it out and do long division, I want everybody to write this in their book because this is another common error. If it's one divided by three, how do I show one divided by three in the box form? Ethan, where does my one go? Um, Underneath the box, yes. So, and again, that doesn't change how I say the problem. All three of those problems, I say one, divided by three. One divided by three. One divided by three. Okay, they all are the same problem written different ways. It's like me writing my name in print, okay, in cursive, or yeah, in bubble letters. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they all say the same thing, they just look slightly different. They all have the same value, exactly the same. So what we're gonna do, and I don't like the examples in the book because they give us too much, okay? So we're gonna kind of ignore everything but the question. So it says, Dylan, Drake, and Jade are sharing two small pieces equally after their lacrosse game. How much does each person get. Look for your dividend first. What do we have that is being divided, shared, passed out, used? Reese? Two pizzas. So two pizzas is my dividend. Let's write this out to the side. We're ignoring that they have all of the answers there for us. Two. And we are dividing it equally between how many equal parts? Logan? How many people are sharing that pizza? Three. Without doing any math at all, what is two divided by three, Lena? Two thirds. Without doing any math at all. Who can give me an answer sentence for this? Kinley, go ahead. Okay, and she added in the extra words, each person, let's write this right here, each person gets two-thirds of a pizza. Because does it make sense to say two-thirds pizza? No. No, if you're getting less than one, you add in those extra couple words, of a. If your answer is greater than one, what's the opposite of singular? Plural. Plural, okay? So just like with labels, if there's more than one, that means it's plural. So if this was like one and two thirds, you would just say one and two thirds pizzas. Pizzas, because you have more than one, so you just add an S to the label. 
If it's less than one, so if you just have a proper fraction, you add in of a uh, and then the label. And we're going to practice that. Okay, that's really what we're doing tonight. I have a few more things I'm going to force you to write out, but in a nutshell, that's it. Let's look, flip over to the independent practice. And you just got to turn one page and look on the right. Okay, we're not going to draw a model. We are going to write the number sentence, write the fraction answer, write an answer sentence. And then each of these also asks us the answer is between what two whole numbers. So we have lots of different parts that we're going to fill in about these problems. We're going to do it all out to the side. We're going to ignore all of these extra boxes because, again, they're giving us too much help there. So number two says four families equally share five pies. How much pie will each family receive? Look for your dividend first. What do you have that is being shared, split, divided up, used, any of those key words? Nolan? Five pies. Five pies. So five is our dividend because we have five pies. Paxton, what is the five pies being divided into? Four equal groups, four families. So this one, our number sentence is five divided by four. Chase, without doing any math at all, what is five divided by four? Five over four, five, over four, five fourths. Now, you guys know enough to know about fractions to know is that a good final answer when I'm giving my answer as a fraction? No. Nope. Livy, what's wrong with it? It is an improper fraction. Kanan, how do I simplify an improper fraction? Yeah, I have to convert it to a what? A mixed number, okay? So he is correct. We have to see how many times four goes into five. So let's set up that math problem. Cooper, how many times does four go into five? It does. One, okay. One times four is four. And then what do I do with that one, Cooper? Okay, that is my numerator. And then what's my denominator? The five. Nope. The four. the four. Okay? So one and one fourth. Who can give me an answer sentence? Because that's that's all that's the answer. We just and we didn't really have to do a whole lot of math. The only division we did was right there. Paxton, give me a good answer sentence. So each family receives one and one fourth. It's plural, so what's the plural of pie? Pies. One and one fourth pies. And again, it sounds funny because we're not used to talking like that. So each family receives one and one fourth pies. Because if we said of a pie, we'd have to say one whole pie and one fourth of another pie. So it's easier just to say one and one fourth pies. Now, the answer is between what two whole numbers? So we're focusing on one and one fourth. Carter, one and one fourth is between what two whole numbers? So hold on, think about it. You have one pie and one fourth of a second pie. Who remembers the trick to pick out the whole numbers? Nolan? Yeah, look for the whole number given, which is one, and then count by count up one. So, Carter, what's one more than one? Two. two. So that fraction is between one and two. Okay, let's look at number three. C 
six bags of soil are used to fill five flower pots. How much soil does each flower pot use? Between what two whole numbers does the answer lie? So again, look for the dividend first. Ethan, in this problem, what do I have that's being divided, spread out, shared, or used? Yeah, six bags of soil is what's being spread out. So that would be our dividend. So we're going to start with a six. Nolan. What is it being split into, Jack? Okay, how many pots? Five. five. So those six bags are split equally into five equal pots. Jalen, without doing any math at all, what's six divided by five? Um, six, over five. six over five. So six divided by five is six fifths. Logan, is that a good final answer, do you think? Why not? Yeah, it's an improper fraction. Lena, how do I simplify improper fractions? What? You said it wrong. There we go. Okay, yes. Six divided by five. And again, I'm going to start correcting you guys every time because I want you to say it right. Even if you would have wrote it right, I want you to be able to say it right. When we write it in the box, it's six <clears throat> divided by five. Addie, how many times does five go into six? One, so that I just put a one there, I subtract. Emmett, what do I do with that leftover, my remainder? One and one, what goes on bottom? Fifth, yep, good job. Okay, so my answer is one and one fifth. Who can give me my answer sentence? Cooper, can you give me an answer sentence for this one? Okay, and it just bags. I know it sounds weird because it's more than one. So if it's greater than one, each pot uses one and one fifth bags, and he gave the whole label, which is what I want bags of soil. Good job. Common wrong answer there. And it's not a wrong answer, it's just a wrong way to give the answer. I have a lot of people say each pot uses one and one fifth soil. Because a lot of times, when if you would read it after you write it, you'd be like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But we don't always read our answers and see if they make sense. How, why would some people put each pot uses one and one fifth soil? Jack? Since the, since the label is soil. Yeah, because the question says, how much soil? So when you reread the question, you see the word soil. Just think about how do we measure that soil, OK? So Cooper was absolutely correct. We measure it in bags, so our label should be in bags. Turn the page. I want you to try, for number five and six, I want you to try and write the number sentence, the answer, and the answer sentence for five and six. So you're trying to do number five and number six. And you can just do it out here to the side and just write the answer sentence on the line. Okay, who can help me with number five? Stella, what was your number sentence? Okay, why was it, why do you think it's four divided by three? Because he used four gallons. He used four gallons. That's what he had that was being split, divided, shared, or used, okay? And why three? Good job. Okay, so four divided by three is the correct number sentence. Reese, without doing any math at all, what's four divided by three? Four thirds. Four thirds. Logan, what's a better answer than four thirds? Good job. One and one third. Who can give me an answer sentence? Ethan, can you give me an answer sentence for this one? Good job. 
he used or uses one and one third gallons of gas each day. Okay, next one. Avery, what did you come up with as your number sentence? Two divided by 10. Two divided by 10. Because she made two gallons of punch and she's dividing it among 10 people. Cooper, without doing any math, what's two divided by 10? I have no idea. So don't overthink it. Two tenths. Two tenths, that's it. Two tenths. Now, but then think about it. Shh. Is two tenths a good final fraction answer? Yes. No. Why not, Callan? Why is two tenths not a good final answer? Yes. Our only rule is once we get our fraction, just like here in four thirds, we simplified it. If it's a m improper fraction, we can simplify it to a mixed number. This one's not an improper fraction, but I can reduce them both by two and get one fifth. Paxton, give me an answer sentence for this one. Hold on, the question says, how much of the punch did each person receive? If it's less than one, we add in the word of a. So one fifth of a gallon. Okay, while you were working on those problems, I passed you out a worksheet. We're gonna do a couple of those together. So pull that to the top. <clears throat> Should I have one on your desk? Okay, the first one, it's taken a second to load, says five oranges are shared equally by two people. How many oranges does each person get? I added in a question on this one because it's a question that popped up, I think on IAR or on IXL and it confused students. The how many equal parts. My suggestion is start with your number sentence. And then we'll loop back around to the equal parts. What do we have that we're breaking or sharing, dividing, splitting, Briley? Five we have five oranges. So our number sentence is going to be five divided by. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. There will be bonds here. Were you able to get her stuff? Uh, um, yeah, hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't. Okay, I'll try this again. Okay, so number sentence is five divided by two. Two. Why is it five divided by two, Emmett? Because five oranges are shared equally, equally by two people. Yeah, because we split it into two groups. Cam, without doing any math, what's five divided by two? Five over two. Five over two. So that'll go under our answer. Five halves is how we say that, or five over two. Is that a good final answer, Kanan? No. Yes. Kanan, how do I change an improper fraction to a mixed number? Yeah, so we have to divide it out. So I'm going to do that out this side. Ethan, how many times does two go into five? Two times. Two times, so we put a two out there. Two times two is four. So it's two and a half. Cooper, have a seat. Hey guys, we're doing a whole nother example before you leave, okay? I'm sorry there were lots of interruptions, but we're getting through that example and that one before you leave this room. So two and a half, what two whole numbers does that fall between, Lena? Between two and three, because it's always the whole number given and the next one when you're counting. Who can give me an answer sentence for that? Kinley? Uh, each 
okay? Each person will get two and a half oranges. Okay? I left enough room under all of the word problems to write an answer sentence. When you come tomorrow, everyone needs an answer sentence or else it's considered incomplete. We're doing the next one. Have a seat. A pet store uses five bags of dog food to feed 12 dogs. How much food does each dog get? Stella, what do I have that I'm, oop, we skipped the equal parts. That would be two. What do I have that I'm breaking into groups, Stella? I have five bags, so I'm starting with my number sentence. How many groups am I splitting that into, Carter? Twelve groups. So it's going to be twelve equal parts. Shut that, please. My answer, Jalen, what's five divided by twelve without doing any math? Five twelfths. Now, do I have to divide this one out and give it a mixed number? No. Why not? It's a, it's a proper fraction. So now think about, can it be reduced? No. So that is my final answer. 5 twelfths is between what two whole numbers, Cam? Zero and one. Good job, because there's not a whole number there. Nolan, give me an answer sentence. Be a, a little bit better. Each dog will get five twelfths of food. Not of food. Of five twelfths of a bag of food. Five twelfths of a bag of food. Yeah, there's lots of ofs. Hold on, everybody sit tight. Hold on. Wait just a second. Listen carefully. Your homework is to finish this worksheet. There is a backside. When you come tomorrow, everything should be filled in, okay? All of these, the how many parts, the number sentence, the answer, the between, and you should have an answer sentence for every single problem. If you say, I forgot the answer sentence, I'm gonna say it's a missing assignment. Okay, questions? Okay, you guys may go.